I would like to bring in the relationship between the cash and MMU. I think already you could have understood the, the basics of MMU, which basically translates uh, the virtual address into physical address to support virtual memory. Now, uh, I, I just let, let me bring in okay some relationship between the cash and MMU. Okay, assume if the cash is introduced before MMU, understand? This is CPU, this is main memory, CPU releases a virtual address which need to be converted into okay, the physical address by MMU. Now, the cache is introduced before MMU. Now, this particular cache holds the recently accessed data from the main memory uh, which are addressed using virtual address. Yeah, this cache is addressed virtually, so we call this as logical cache. If the same cache is introduced after MMU. Now you please try to understand. This cache holds again the recently accessed data from the main memory, but the cache is addressed using physical address. Or oh, this physical cache, because it is addressable using physical address. Yeah, that's physical cache and the logical cache. So, in logical cache, the cache is located within core and MMU stores the data in the virtual address space also called as virtual cache coming to physical cache cache is located again between okay mmu and the core mmu must translate va to pa that is virtual address to okay the physical address before the cache memory can provide the data okay that's virtual cache sorry your logical cache and physical cache next Coming to cache architecture, cache could be uh, organized in monument architecture or even Howard architecture. In monument architecture, okay, uh, we have uh, uh, a single cache uh, which is capable of retaining the recently accessed instruction as well as recently accessed data. We call this as unified cache in Howard ar architecture. The cache could be implemented in Howard architecture, where we maintain a separate cache for holding recently accessed instructions and a separate cache to hold the recently accessed data. We call this as split cache. Now, this is okay. This this organization is irrespective of the CPU architecture. There can be a Wonderman architecture CPU implementing Howard uh, cache. Or there could be a Howard architecture CPU implementing Wonderman cache uh, uh, possible. Okay, so now what we are discussing is a cache architecture. So that's Howard and Wonderman architecture. Coming to the cache operation, a simple overview. How this cache operates? We'll start like this. Let's say a CPU request content of a main memory location. The CPU checks the data from the cache. It checks, is the data that I am looking for, is there in cache? If it is present. It gets from cache, then the okay, operation is completed quite fast. If it is not present, oh, then read the required okay, data, the required block from main memory to, to cache and then deliver from cache to CPU. Oh, that's how we ensure that the recently accessed data always resides in cache. The cache includes tags to identify which block of main memory is in the cache slot. Let me explain you that little later. Now, uh, the operations could be, uh, you know, given a small flow. Let's say start, receive the address from CPU. Is the block, is the data containing this received addresses in cache? If it is yes, a fetch the received address word and deliver to CPU. Done, completed. If the block that CPU was looking for pertaining to this received address is not there in cache, then access main memory block containing the received address, allocate a cache line, reserve cache line for main memory block, deliver this to CPU, parallelly load main memory block into the cache line. Yeah, this is what happens. Now probably logically we need to understand like this. If the data that CPU was looking for is not present in the cache, 
then read the required block from main memory to not to cpu to cache and then deliver from cache to cpu yeah this is logically how we need to understand the cache operation okay